Amen, amen. Awesome. Easter Sunday, we're here. Who's excited? Come on. What a wonderful, unprecedented, unparalleled day that we get to celebrate because today makes all the difference. Without today, there's no reason for hope. Without today, there's no reason for life. Without today, we are all stuck right where we are. Today represents everything. And we're so glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or online. We're so thankful to have the opportunity to still gather together in both realities, online and in person, even in this season of the emergency break, temporary shutdown order thing, or whatever phraseology you want to use to describe the moment that we're in right here, right now. I have a story that's always stuck in my brain when I think about Easter, and it has to do with a window and a bird. When I was a young kid, we had this lovely bay window in our house growing up in rural Saskatchewan. Amazing. I I, I know that because I had to clean it very frequently. And my dad and my mom loved a very clean home, a very clean environment. And so they wanted it like squeaky clean where you wouldn't even be able to see the glass. You'd be looking from one side, looking outside, and you're like, there's nothing there. I could walk right through it. It was a Saturday morning. I was practicing piano. We were in the living room. My dad was reading. My mom was doing something else. We heard this big bang. We thought something is going crazy because it's, it's summer, so nobody's throwing snow at a window. It's got to be something else. We went to investigate. We saw this little sparrow twitching on the sidewalk. It had flown headfirst right into the window thinking that they could fly through what was happening. And I remember in that moment thinking, if I could only bring that back to life, wouldn't that be cool? If I could just reach down and bring it back to life. And I said, hey, Dad, do you think we could nurse it back to life? He's like, I don't know. I think we need to leave it and see what happens. Sure enough, as the day crept forward, that little guy went from twitching to moving and from moving to standing and from standing to actually hopping around. And and over time, a number of hours, it actually literally flew away to hit somebody else's window later, I'm sure. (laughs) This whole thing of life and death, it's, it's something that you and I deal with on a daily basis. We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know what is going to transpire in our lives. And so we're faced with this reality that we're, we're living in temporary borrowed time right now. Our life, not going to last forever in this current reality, but there is hope because Jesus came to bring us life after this human experience. We're reminded on this Easter Sunday of that simple truth and reality. What we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to dig in a little bit deeper to this whole idea of the resurrection story, Jesus coming back to life, Jesus actually living into what he said he was going to do before it actually happened. If you've got a Bible with you, I want to encourage you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to be reading the first 10 verses. We're going to learn a little bit together, and then we're going to get to celebrate on this unprecedented Sunday of baptizing several individuals as they choose to publicly confess their relationship with Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse number one. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he has gone ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't Be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. A couple of things that I want to zone in on for a little bit of time today. The first is the the first people that witnessed Jesus' resurrection were women. 
this is really significant for a number of different reasons. At this point in time, culturally speaking, in this ancient Jewish culture, ancient world culture, women weren't allowed to be witnesses in a legal court. Okay, so even if they witnessed a crime in action, they witnessed some sort of abuse or betrayal, their story wasn't credible. Wasn't credible. They were, th- they were like less than. Okay, if it was a man, then that was taken seriously. What's very interesting to me is that Jesus chooses to allow the first people to see him resurrected women, others that would have seen, been labeled as less than. You know what that tells us? Every single one of us has value in the kingdom of God. Every single one of us, no matter how much money we have, how much money we don't have, where we come from, what we've done, what we're doing currently, we all have value in God's kingdom. It doesn't matter your race, your color, your creed, where you come from, where you were born, what hockey team you cheer for. None of that matters as long as you are submitting your life to Christ. You have value. This is so key for us to understand Because right in that moment, right at the outset, right when Jesus did everything that he said he was going to do, comes back to life from being crucified, the most gruesome death ever, he says, you know what? I'm going to flip the whole system on its head. Everybody has value. This isn't an elitist type of following or movement that we're creating. Everybody has value. Every single person. Here today in 2021, everybody has value. Every single one. Those of you who are online, those of you who are in person, those who have yet to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ, we all have value. And to operate in God's kingdom is to recognize that every single person has that value and we need to bring that value, that dignity, and that hope to every single person. No one gets excluded. That's not our job. Our job is to love and include everybody. Huge first reality from this moment in history that we need to be reminded of on a consistent basis. The second is this. Their reaction. Their reaction. At first they see this angel and they were frightened. They were terrified. There's a couple of guards there that fall dead in a faint. They don't know what to do. And sometimes that describes you and I. When we encounter the extraordinary, we don't know what to do. We can't describe it. We can't articulate what it is that's happening in the moment. We can't rationalize it. And so we move into the isms. We embrace things like criticism, cynicism, and all the other isms. Why is it that we have a propensity to try and explain away the supernatural? To try and say that something doesn't make sense, so therefore it is not possible. Why do we have the the tendency to lean in that direction? Can you imagine for a moment if you and I would resist that urge? Resist the urge to kind of criticize or chastise something that's happening that we just can't explain in the moment. See, that's the difference between faith and fact. In this moment, what's cool is you get a marriage between the both. The fact is Jesus is is raised from the dead. He is now living and breathing, and these women encounter him as they're running back to tell his followers, his disciples, that Jesus is alive. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. And then they're, they're, they're filled with this combination of fear and joy. They still can't explain it. Kind of reminds me of magic tricks. I had an uncle, his name is Uncle Don, and he would pull quarters out of my ear like nobody's business. It was amazing because I always wanted to go to where Uncle Don was because he would give me a quarter. Now, it's 2021, so a quarter is now a loony. But you imagine that? Like, if, if you've got little kids in your house or in your neighborhood or in your community, your extended family, in your social circle, and you're pulling a loony out of their ear... They're mesmerized. They're filled with a sense of wonder, a sense of curiosity. How could that happen? Where, when have we lost our sense of wonder? When have we replaced it with the desire to explain away the supernatural? 
And I wonder if Easter is just that, that overt reminder that there are things that we aren't going to be able to fully explain and we have to be okay with that reality. Living in a little bit of the unknown or not yet known. See, the promise of the gospel, the promise of the hope of Jesus Christ is that one day we're going to be fully aware of everything. And that day is when we are in eternity with Jesus. Right now we have to do our best to trust along the way. We have to do our best to trust along the way, embrace some ambiguity, and be okay with that. Knowing that God knows and sees what we don't know and what we don't see. God is God and we are not. If we could recultivate our sense of wonder, our sense of hope, you know what happens? Gratitude. Gratitude just overflows from our lives when we are just thankful. Every time my Uncle Don pulled a quarter out of my ear, I was like, whoa, I'm getting a Slurpee today. This is amazing. Keep going. He wouldn't want to keep going, though. After four or five, he's like, ah, the quarters are all out. Your ears are clean. It's because his pocket was empty. I didn't know that, but I was thankful. I was thankful. Are you and I thankful? Are you and I moved by wonder? Are we awestruck? Can we read this story that for some of us is very familiar and and look through it and be absolutely captivated by it once again? A dead man coming to life. A dead man coming back to life. That is simply amazing. If we could live from that space, if we could live from that heartbeat, our lives would be so much richer for it. I don't mean rich in monetary gain. I mean richer for that amazement and wonder. See, the only thing that can bring any part of us back to life is Jesus. That's it. He is the only one that can bring us back to life. And you and I, instead of being captivated by our wonder, at times we are Uh, captivated by other things, less than forms of what we think life is going to bring. It's our retirement plan. It's our holiday strategy. It's our job management strategy. It's our adventure enthusiasm. It's, It's even our desire to see the world go back to normal by getting a vaccine. It's whatever. We try to take these placebos and go like, that's what's going to bring us back to life. But the truth is, none of that will. They are temporary agents to satiate the moment. Temporary agents to satiate the moment. The only thing that will truly fulfill you, truly bring you to life is Jesus. He says this most famously in the book of John. I have come that you may have life to the full. Life to the abundant. Life that has purpose and meaning. That's his job, that's his role, that's his gift that he gives to us. It's not death, it's life. But to embrace that life, we actually have to die to ourselves. Let go and let God lead through us, live through us. Allow us to experience life the way it was intended to be lived. That's the key. To being a part of God's kingdom, it starts with Jesus. So let me ask you this. Is there any part of your life right now that's suffering from death? Is there any part of your life right now in this moment that's suffering from death? Is it the way you think about the world or think about yourself? Is it the way you you live financially? Is it the the way you live relationally, your marriage, your, your, your connections with your kids or coworkers or lack of connections with your kids and your coworkers? Is there any part of your life right now that is suffering from death? The gift that God gives to you is this, his resurrected son, the king, Lord Jesus, can bring back to life whatever you put in his hand. Whatever you put into his hand, he can bring it back to life. That does not mean if I'm, okay, God, I'm going to put my bank account in your hand and you're going to make me a billionaire. Woo! No, he's going to give you what you need to do what it is that he's asked you to do. 
So it might not be all the bells and the whistles and all the toys in the world, but he will provide for you because he gives you your daily bread, your daily needs. Not your daily wants, your daily needs. And he helps you reorient what you want to become more of what he wants. If you take that relational brokenness and you put it right in his hand, you know what he does? He brings it back to life. But we have to adopt this posture of hopefulness, of wonder, of amazement, of recognizing that Jesus can do a whole lot more than pulling a quarter from your ear. He can bring dead things back to life. That is the message and the hope of the Easter story. That's what it is. And what's cool on this day is we get to celebrate with a number of individuals who are going to be baptized, which is the ultimate symbol of this story of death and resurrection. They die with Jesus to be raised to life again. As they get submerged in the water and brought back up, they are declaring before God and before us that they are followers of Jesus and they want to live all out for him and they need Jesus to touch every part of their lives because without him, there is only death. Life is only rooted in Jesus. And you and I get to be participants in what is happening in real time in the lives of these people. And that is amazing. Let's pray and let's get ready to celebrate. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to be brought back to life. Lord, we, we confess, I confess that there are so many times that I have tried to make a go of it on my own. I've tried to forge my way ahead and figure it out. But without you, everything else leads to death. And so Jesus, for anybody that is here in this space, anybody that is watching online who does not yet know you, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would meet them right in the middle of what it is they're working through their relational struggle, their financial struggle, their curiosity, their amazement, their awe, their wonder, whatever it is, we don't know, but you do. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give them the courage. I pray that you would inspire them to pursue you, to embrace your gift of life simply by saying, okay, God, I'm yours. I can't do this on my own. I'm I'm yours. I can't do this on my own. Lord, we are, we are so grateful for the opportunity that we have to benefit from your death and resurrection, to grow into the life that you so freely and abundantly give. And, and Father, I pray that in these next few moments, as we celebrate with these people that are choosing you first, I pray, God, that we would, be, we would recognize the absolute privilege that it is to be loved by you. Father, would you bless us, protect us, make your face shine upon us, be gracious to us, and grant us your peace. We pray this in your name. Amen.